With a heavy heart, the GT40 is over. This build is done. I've had parts stolen. I've lost stuff overseas. I have had items damaged. Oh, my heart is out of it. I've completely, completely lost the love. But today, I've bought something that's gonna change everything. It's gonna get me back on track. I'm excited, devastated about this, but excited about how we can get it back on track. When you've got these absolutely beautiful side steps to climb into it. This is all steel, by the way. So this is a proper built so tub. Did you say this thing's been handmade? By yeah, handmade by a guy in his 70s or 80s, yeah. But in this episode, it is all changing. Guys, let's do it. Welcome to Harlock Garage. So this may or not be what you guys have been expecting and with a heavy heart, I've got to tell you, this GT40 project is over. And I'm devastated because this was everything to me. We started this project two years ago. And when we started it, it was everything I wanted. It had a Ford 302 in it, it had a UM1. I'd known the story of the car. I'd seen the car years ago, but through no fault of my own, I've been let down. I bought aluminium arms from Mr. Wisher and they were ready to be engineered. They were full castings, they're absolutely stunning. Well, I sent them to an engineering company here in Hampshire and they were stolen. Every part of this build has been hard work. The front chassis that Tornado supplied was amazing, it was fantastic, but it just doesn't work with the KVA chassis. Parts of this build that have tested and tried every part of me. This car, this KVA build, which so many people have put in the comments, will never be that wow car. It's never gonna be that Southern GT. It's never gonna be that Tornado. It's never gonna be that amazing car. Today is where it all changes, okay? I hope with every part of me by the end of this year, this car will be built. And when I say this car, the front and rear clams will come off. There's parts on this car we are going to reuse. But in this episode, it is all changing. It's all changing for the positive, okay? I'm upset, I'm devastated that this car is not gonna be the car we're gonna finish. But today, we turn our 20 to 30,000 pound GT40 into a $100,000 car. Today I'm introducing an amazing buy, the part that is gonna transition this build into a wow build, not just an okay build or something we're having to go at in a garage. Today I bought myself a monocoque chassis. And what that means is this chassis was built by an 87 year old engineer who worked at Ford, which knew where bolts went, which knew where arms went, which didn't cut rear trailing arms and make them zigzag. This car, will blow your mind, okay? It's an absolutely amazing turning point. It's everything we need. And I promise you, by the end of this video and the end of this year, hopefully your eyes will blow out your head. You'll be excited as much as I am about the new car, about the project, how we're gonna combine both vehicles. And by the end of the year, we're not gonna have just a good GT40. We're gonna have one of the best, most authentic floor pan GT40s in the UK. Without further ado, let's go get it. So before we get into the GT40 mega build, I want to talk to you about our little sponsor. Car Vertical have been with me from the beginning. They are so good at what they do, but today they're about to save you some money. Guys, I know that GT40 has got a checker pass. Where it doesn't have a VIN number, we can't look into the history. But what we have found, guys, is this amazing Ford Escort RS Turbo. And I'm telling you, this car is on the road today and it looks absolutely amazing. But thanks to Car Vertical, I can find out the real history of the car. So the GT40 is an amazing Ford automobile, but so is this Ford RS Turbo. As you can see here on this Car Vertical report, the car itself has had an accident and quite a severe one at that. This car and RS Turbo here in England would be worth a lot of money and that car could be a future classic and an investment for someone. As you can see here, the mileage is okay. It doesn't have any finance against it and you would never know if you didn't do a car vertical check. Today on this video, we're giving you a 20% discount by using the code HARDUP as seen on the screen right now. If you click the link, go and check that car that you put your kids in on the driveway, go check that future classic, which has got your money and your investment in. Get out there, get there now, get the car vertical check done, save 20% and save your investment. Guys, let's get back to the GT40. Good morning, you lovely lads and ladies, but you guys have been after an update on the GT40, and today we are bringing it into the 21st century. First of all, I need my sidekick and number one mechanic. Nope, he's not allowed in. 
<laughs> Hello. You look very tired. I'm a little bit tired. How are you? Are you not a morning person? No, morning person, not. <laughs> I look like this, and you look like this. So I've got him, we're going to Bristol, and then we're going to show you what we're going to look at. Let's go. Guys, thanks for coming back to the channel, but remember to hit that subscribe button. 67% of you are not subscribed. So guys, we have arrived in Bristol, and I've got something a little bit special to show you, Mr. Wiggly. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. Are you I, ready? I know you've been talking about how we're going to proceed with the GT40 because the chassis is oh, no, no, really no, no. bad. You've been talking. <laughs> There's been <laughs> lots of comments. <laughs> Right, so up here, this has been advertised on Facebook and I have seen this a few times come up, but I jumped on it, I threw the guy a deposit just because I wanted to get out here and have a look at it. But up there in the rafters is another GT40. And I know you guys at home are screaming already to say, that's not a Mark III. We know it's not a Mark III, but what we're interested in here is that chassis. Can we get our body panels and this and our chassis parts to all come together to make something special. This here is called a monocoque chassis. So this isn't a frame chassis, but if you follow me, Mr. Wiggly, up these stairs, this could make our car very special. This could re remove flex in the body. So, you know, the car would corner better. It would be a faster car, hopefully, because we'd be able to keep more of that weight down to the ground. And I'm gonna just turn the camera around here and show you guys what I'm looking at. So, Never Josh, worry. it is proper hidden out of the way. Like this, I'd say this is a garage find. Oh, don't start with all of this. Garage find, barn, barn find. find. You won't believe. <laughs> oh, come on. Everyone loves a you won't believe. <laughs> so straight away, yeah, that's just yeah. that monocoque chassis there, the way it's built, the way it's fitted, is a lot nicer what than... What you're going to have is you're going to have a lot more authenticity with it. Because this... Even the way the racks now, like, look at those brackets. Th there aren't that many real genuine GT40s that you can just go and look at to go off. This looks I wonder what that cable away. there is for. We'll have a look in a minute. And so this tunnel here, which you can see should pass through the whole vehicle. And then your coolant pipes come out of there and connect to your radiator up the front. So that must mean that in here, Mr. Wiggly, we've got a new windscreen. Uh, looks like early Jag rack. Okay. So well, also you sense, see here that the, uh, the, the roof's been modified and that's to allow this screen to fit perfectly. There's a brand new windscreen we've got there. And then in here, careful, doors open. Number one, you've got these absolutely beautiful side steps to climb into it. And this is all steel, by the way. So this is a proper built so tub. Did you say this thing's been handmade? By yeah, handmade by a guy in his 70s or 80s, yeah. Look how pretty that dashboard is. I know. So we've got the floor pan both sides. We've got the gear linkage on the driver's side, which isn't right for a Mark III. So we'll we're going to have a ponder whether we're going to leave it there or move it to the middle. I'm sure that ponder will be more like an argument, actually, because I think that looks quite pretty, to be honest. Well, I'm moving it, so it's fine. Into the middle. Yep. <laughs> but we'll no, probably use no, that we'll, gear we'll, selector. No, no, we can't make our minds up until we put it back. If you, exactly. If you say yes on it, yeah. I think you should. Um, we need to... Offer your front and rear clam on yeah. for first. But if we can get your front and rear clam and engine and gearbox minus diff. Aircon. And them sort of bits and pieces to fit all with this, yeah. then this is a wow car. Well we, you, we always knew from the start we wanted to try and make a monocoque esque looking uh replica yeah. recreation. So well what way to do one better is just to buy a monocoque. So, so if we can make the monocoque this monocoque fit your Mark III theme. We're, we've, we're on to a winner. So basically your front suspension looks like, what does the front suspension look like in your opinion? Do you want to throw the camera in there? Uh, and just it have a... looks like early S type Jag okay. or, or Mark II Jag or something like that. Um, Get in there and just it's show not, them. It's not okay. wide enough. They're not, well, but I we've got our proper cast aluminium engineered uprights now. Well, it's got, it's got fabricated top and bottom arms that you can just about see in there, which are fine. But if we can make those work and fit, with what we've got, that'll be fine. And then it's got these uprights, which look to me, focus, there you go, look to me like they're early Jag. I mean, it's they early Jag. They don't look like a Ford Focus upright. <laughs> I have to put up with this on a daily basis. There's I some mean, stuff. I'm, I'm not much better. Mr. Wiggly, there's some stuff back here you might like. Well, I'm looking at the front. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm at the business end. So that cable, I believe, is for that shoot and brake handbrake. Right. I just saw in the dash. Do you want to see? 
Okay, so that goes from the front there underneath the dash, which has looked like it's proper engineered. Look at that, the way it sits. That, I mean, that looks a lot more sort of Ooh, factory than, than what you think. Is that the think. cable there? Have you noticed? It goes through to there. Yeah. So it's got a hydraulic servo, so you've got a hydro on the rear. <laughs> For drifting. Donuts. Dr drifty Millers. Right. Who's going to have the Ultima and who's going to have this? Well, we'll, we'll have gonna, a race. Are we going to do a big race? The red car and the yellow car had a race. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Shit. Look, so the dashboard is lovely. We've also yeah. got a dashboard up here. Where's the Well, deck? that's the dashboard that fits on top of the dashboard. Yeah, I'll show you that in a minute. Let's go try and lift this into the back. So it's got me... a engine. I can see one. It's not what we've got. We've got a lovely built So that's Rover. Do we know if it's 3.9 or 3.5? We don't know, but we'll find out. We've got a lovely set of headers there. They are nice, Very aren't pretty, they? aren't they? Um, oh, SPACs uprights, but hopefully Nitron, my pals out there, will look after me. But those uprights, although they're very, very pretty, I'm pretty sure that we could put our, our aluminium ones on it. We can, but I want to use these top and bottom arms because they, as much as they might not they? be as perfect as, and, and as good as what we can buy. They're very pretty. They, well, it's not even that. They look authentic. Look in there. Look, so down there, you've got your fuel pumps encased in this side and the battery will go the other um, side. What do we call these tyres? I know you've got cross plies, but these, what, what is plies? These are ply plies. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, they're great, but... Well, they, uh, uh, one, they're 19, one, one they're J whip. 19 mil by... <laughs> but look at these <laughs> brackets here. Place. Look at that there. So yeah, even that I mean. upper turret mount. Look at the work that's gone into every single little you piece. You can tell a proper engineer has built this car start to finish has gone and, and above and beyond. They're not at a horrible angle like yours. What about the bottom ones? Are the bottom ones zigzags? What's that? No, these trailing arms. Right. Your bottom trailing arm is a zigzag, which means yeah. it's non-adjustable, But which is no good. This uh, is absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, this is lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, uh, I mean, I think we've got a lot to play with here. Um, We've got everything is constructed in a proper way that's going to make it stronger and a lot nicer to, to work with. Yeah. Um, I think realistically, you put your alley arms on, engine gearbox in, we run the air conditioning. Because uh, Do we need the air con? It makes everything sound so simple. It depends what you want to do. Yes, realistically, because the Mark III was a road car. Yeah. And wire, you know, wire wheels, big soft tyres. Yeah. Um, air con, and comfortable also, seats. So when we come back and we build this car, guys, we have purchased a set of proper wheels. I've got a proper set of um, You've got Boreani. to try and find some centre spindles centre for those, spindles, That's way. fine. So we've got proper wheels. We now have a monocoque chassis. I'm going to get the deal done. I'm going to buy this. And then we're going to go back to the workshop and we're just going to show you what we mean in relation to the differences that this car has. This car being a monocoque, which means it is all fabricated steel, all welded together that makes all these panels up, which makes our floor pan nicer. It makes, instead of having a ladder chassis and just riveting aluminium to it, this is all steel fabricated a lot stronger. There's no flex, there's no roll I mean, in it. There's going to be someone out there that's going to comment and go, oh, I've sorted some alley paneling. There is some alley paneling in the sides and bits and pieces, but yeah. the bulk from the, the bulk of the car between the wheels is as much sort of one piece as possible that can be made by an enthusiast in a garage with yeah. some engineering equipment. Like, but it's, it's brilliant. You've got to understand, you know, when the gentleman that built our one built it, he built it in a shed and it was out of a home kit. This car has been built by a full on engineer. Yep. So this car takes us to a new tier of level. This will allow our vehicle to be worth more when it's done, but also be a better quality build. So hopefully the likes of the Stig, Mr. Ben Collins, our good friend, hopefully he'd be more comfortable driving this in with this chassis on it. He'd be happy to drive it no matter what. He drove a Robin Reliant into a swimming into pool. A swimming pool. He did do that. Yes. But then we can have a race with the Ultima and the GT40, depending on how long this is actually going to take you to do. Because I think we need to block out a couple of weeks in February where you're just going to get on this and get it done. You get to earn some money then. Well, I'll earn some money and I'll give you some money. How about that? Well, deal. And then I'll go to the GT40. <laughs> so, guys, we're here. We've bought it. The deal's been done. There's obviously going to be parts on this car that we're not going to be able to use. So we've got um, a UM1 gearbox shell here. We've got a new UM1 gearbox to go on there. This is a Rover V8. We're not sure what size it is, but we're probably not going to need that because we're going to put our 302 in it that's got the, uh, the Simon Hicks heads on it. It's going to be an animal and really, really excited about the next stage. But you guys have been after an update. We hit a bit of a wall, not only with parts, but with the quality of the build of the car, because we want to put some money into this car to make it a 50, 60,000 pound car when it's done. But we need to start with the right foundations, right, Josh? 
Well, yeah, I mean, it's kind of what I was saying from the start, Sam. So. Right, let's get this bad boy back to the shop. Let's go. So Josh, let me show you over here. This is our dash and look how pretty that has been made. And this louver panel on the top, fully hand built. And I know people out there are gonna go, you can buy them, but not to this quality. That is a full piece of machined aluminium. You've got these little bits here, look, that sort of direct the gauges towards the front. Proper little Smith's gauges, look. It's very, very pretty. Yeah. I don't know what other parts he has available in relation to, to the gauges or anything like that, but we know we've got the seal trims over there that obviously cover up the fuel tanks. Um, but I'm really happy, I'm really, really excited. So uh, just before we go, I thought I'd show you that dashboard, guys. So we're back here again, and the last time you were here, you saw the GT40 was hiding up there out of the way. It's now down here on the floor, and it's our first time we get to have a look at the back end of it properly. As you can see, there's a little bit of damage on the fiberglass, but this is all repairable. Walking around the cars, the doors are beautiful compared to ours, the door handles, the nose cone, the dash is stunning. We've got this aluminium, um, or aluminum, depends if you're watching in the Americas. That is the skid pan that goes underneath, I believe, the rear, so I think the UM1 gearbox would protrude into it that's why it's been changed we've got the foam seat pads as well we might be able to use them we may not but we've got a secondary steering wheel lots of bits and pieces um, in there you've obviously got the 3.5 or 3.9 litre v8 with the snake exhaust so these exhausts may be usable for our spare gt40 but today we're going to get it loaded on the truck and uh, i don't know about you guys but i'm not knackered yet but i'm sure i will be in just a moment let's get it loaded Okay, so with the GT40 fully loaded on the truck, there's a couple of details I wanted just to go over. First of all, this car would have not normally come with wooden wheels. These are 19 millimeter ply wheels with a four stud, so obviously not a Ford stud stud fitment, but a bit of fun, but they helped us get it loaded, which is absolutely fantastic. Really, really excited about this car. Honestly, this is gonna bring the car into a new realm. Now it's a matter of getting these straps on, getting it loaded, and then basically securing parts like the windscreen, the foam, and all the parts that come with the car. Okay, so this car included lots of parts that we're gonna need for our build, including a brand new windscreen, seal covers, gauges, including a coolant reservoir, a gearbox, so many bits that we need, including a wiring harness as well, but we're getting it all loaded up. So we have our spare gearbox and all our parts, including our seal covers, loaded in the cab. I'm knackered, but you know what, it's all done. The windscreen is held in place. The front clam is now tight as well. I've used the clasps that are already there. So now it's to get back to the Wiggly Farm. Let's go. Thanks for watching guys, but now what you gotta do is hit that subscribe button followed by the bell icon. What the bell icon allows you to do is let you know when we release new videos every single week, including this crazy video with Snoop Dogg's Cadillac Coupe de Ville. We're also available on amazing platforms like Facebook, YouTube Shorts, Instagram, and even TikTok. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Keep being amazing. Sounded like a real new anthem. Shawty saw my wallet, now she think a new ransom. Whoa, telling me she wanted me to hammer. Trying to get saved, baby, I am not the answer. No.